As we previously stated, one of the main goals of this course is to understand what goes on under the hood of a Bitcoin transaction or blockchain transaction. So we're going to go over step by step uh, the transaction process, the different stages that Bitcoin goes through when being transferred. It's really important to know that there is no central Bitcoin company and there's no Bitcoin CEO calling the shots. All decisions are made by members of the network. How do you become a member of the network? Easy. Anybody can do it. Anybody that has access to the internet and a computer. You just download the software, start running it, and you're part of the network. You just download that blockchain history. You've caught up. So changes in the code, Bitcoin's code, while not controlled by any one decision maker, it can be changed by the average user proposing a change in that code and other users basically decide to accept or reject those proposals. This is what makes Bitcoin bailout proof. Even if somebody wanted to bail out Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network, it'd be impossible. That's the nature of a decentralized project. Basically, you can't do it. What would you bail out? So the first step in initiating a transaction is data signing. So what this is, basically it's a process that initiates a transaction. In order to initiate that transaction, you need to use your private cryptocurrency data in order to initiate a transaction, in order to say, yes, this is my money, I can prove it, and I'm going to transact, send it wherever. So once this data signing process occurs, transaction, is initiated and is then broadcast to the network. So the other members, remember egalitarian members, just anybody running the software on their computer are alerted of this transaction. They instantly cross check the transaction with their version of the history of all transactions on the blockchain in order to make sure that yes, the transaction can go through. Uh, not that somebody is trying to spend the same Bitcoin twice or exceed their balance. So the other nodes on the network are constantly, other members of the network are constantly just cross-checking each other in order to make sure that the rules of the network are being followed. So at this point, transaction has been broadcast. Say everything is good with the transaction. Other nodes are going to say, yeah, this transaction can go through because nobody's trying to do anything wrong. Nobody's trying to mess with the network. At that point, the transaction is validated. It's okay. It is not instantly processed, however. It goes to a place called the mempool. And that's what happens before your transaction is added to a block and is uh, actually executed. So the mempool is basically, the best analogy for it is the waiting room. It's where transactions, validated transactions, so we know they're okay, go into a waiting room before they are processed and executed by putting them into a block. So once it's time to form a block of all these transactions, just a list, a running list of these transactions, uh, eventually it's going to get picked from that mempool, from that waiting room, added into a block. And at that point, that is when the transaction will be executed. Interesting question is, do you have to be online to receive cryptocurrency? I get this question all the time. The answer is no, you don't have to be online. What's going to happen is when you log back on, you might not have the data of that transaction that you're receiving. However, everybody else has the updated copy of that ledger, including the transaction that you want to receive. So what's gonna happen is if you're offline, come back online, basically you're going to resync with the blockchain. You're going to catch up in order to uh, basically be up to date. And in doing so, someone else is going to have a record of the transaction uh, you are trying to receive even though you're offline. So basically, you sync with the other nodes or computers on the blockchain in order to catch up and receive your transaction. 